Hello and welcome to this first introductory video about maths for 3D artists. And in this one, I will be explaining what we will be going through and why you even should use it and need it. So obviously, if you are into creating 3D assets, for example, you might not be in need of using math at all, or so you would think, right? So for example, if you're sculpting in ZBrush or Blender or whatever, you don't need equations to create tigers and elven riders and magical creatures and all that kind of stuff. However, it will be super useful to know all of these things anyway, because if you are into rendering things, if you are going to export it to game engine or just into DCC, whichever, and make some tweaks or additions after even you sculpt by hand everything, this will be super useful to you as well. So with that out of the way, let's actually see what we will be covering in this series of tutorials. And the first one will be actually we will jump straight our head first into the sort of like a dive into how to basically use equations and how to manipulate our geometry using equations. First one will be how to basically create the monkey saddle visualization using Blender 3D ge geometry nodes. This will be just a showcase that you can use it in any application of your choice, not just Houdini or Unreal Engine or whatever. Pretty much any application that allows you for manipulating your geometry in a way that, uh, for example, attribute swaps or geometry nodes allow you to do that, it will be applicable in any application that you are using of your choice. So it doesn't really matter. The fundamentals will be the same. And for Houdini part, we'll be using hyperbolic paraboloids, as you already have might have seen. I will be creating a potato chip using math equations. So that's kind of fun. And the whole point of these videos is not just to learn, so to speak, math and vector and all that sort of things that are relating to 3D geometry in an abstract way, but I'm trying to make it in a fun way. If you studied basics of vector algebra, and you might remember that it might have been relatively boring. However, in our case, I'll try to make somewhat fun examples or at least really applicable examples and not just some abstract mambo jumbo that you will not be using anywhere at all. So sometimes it's being presented to you as just dementals without the fun part, but we will have fun dementals. So anyway, let's uh, move on. So next one will be trigonometry. Um, and again, super applicable, not just some abstract knowledge, abstract data, but uh, we will be using sine, cosine, other basic functions. And I'll try to showcase different ways of how we can use, like, for example, sine function, as in we can manipulate the geometry position itself. Or, for example, in the material, we can modulate the brightness of a lamp, for example, and we can make some sort of a light source that will go from really really dim to bright and back again and repeat on itself so this is what i mean when we will be trying to tie for example the material emission function to the time using in our case sine function okay so next one we will talk about floor round ceiling modulo all that kind of stuff that we will use it might be useful not just for modeling again, but it might be super useful for materials or for working with particle stimulation, all this kind of stuff. And as you can see, this is a screenshot of floor, ceiling and round inside of attribute vops. This is a visualization I took from Wikipedia, I think. Uh, this is floor visualization somewhere from the internet. But anyway, again, this is a little bit abstract here, but we will be trying to utilize kind of like the meat and potatoes of those functions to actually make them work for us in a applicable way. So next one would be actually slightly more theoretical, as in I'll try to help you understand what's going on with talking about how color can be a vector how can we manipulate color, for example, how we can increase contrast, what does it mean to multiply color. Simple example would be if you have ever used like Photoshop or Affinity Photo or Crete, uh, you might see that if you overlay a picture with a darker color and you choose the multiply, it always go darker. We'll actually see why is that. After that, since we will be already, by that time, we will be understanding why uh, we can manipulate color as a vector and we can actually work with it as just with a simple number of floats. For example, float three is a vector. We can see how we can do mathematical operations using colors as well. 
But that's not all. Uh, we will also talk about how this applies to normals. This is somewhat important for anyone who is also working with, for example, assets. Basically, as we will see that normals are a vector information encoded as a color. So this is how it all kind of like comes together in this one. Then we will talk about dot product, cross product, how we can use dot product to kind of like build our own Fresnel function or cross product to orientate vectors, how we can use dot product and cross product, the rule of thumb of cross product and other useful things. This also might not be the whole thing that we'll be covering through this series because if I, you know, forgot something in this presentation, I will be definitely just update the playlist of these videos. However, as you might imagine, there is a number of things that need to be prepared to make Make this kind of like lectures somewhat engaging at least so it might take me some time to create those so the best way to basically be on top of your math game inside of 3d is to subscribe to the channel and i hope to see you in the next videos and let's begin our learning journey thanks for watching and i hope you have a nice day